Numbers, where we embark on a puzzling journey into pure imagination and inspiration, a little like Alice heading down the rabbit hole and peering through the looking glass, firstly, discovering curiouser and curiouser mathematical delights, Lily Zerner. Hi, Richard. And we call him the tortoise because he taught us. <laughs> David Astle. <laughs> Welcome, both of you. Now, I mean, uh, fairy tales were a big part of all of our childhoods. Did you have a favourite sort of fairy tale, Lily? I always loved the Jungle Book. <laughs> it was a great story. I, I really loved that book as well. And, uh, David, I mean, you would have you would have loved those Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass with all that imagination and lateral thinking. Yeah, that's right. Lots of puzzles and riddles in that book, but also the White Rabbit. And it's something that I've discovered uh, more recently is that the White Rabbit is actually based on, it is believed, uh, Reverend uh, Spooner. The man who gave us spoonerism, such as, you know, silly learner or <laughs> netters and lumbers, uh, those transposition of uh, consonants. So why is a white rabbit based on him? Well, he actually was uh, close to Albino himself. He was a, a lecturer in divinity uh, close to where, at Oxford, where uh, Carol was also based. And uh, he was um, also very short-sighted and continually late because he was both a lecturer and a, uh, a preacher between the chapel and the uh, lecture hall and herring or herring <laughs> around the uh, campus continually. So... What an amazing human tie-in. Mm. That's fascinating. Welcome, David. Thank Welcome, you. Lily. Thank you. And hoping for a fairy tale ending tonight, our contestants. Starting with our carryover champion, mechanical engineer and poker player, Paul Merry. Welcome back, Paul. Now, we heard a little bit about your... Um, professional poker playing in Las Vegas yep. last night. You know, when you are at a table of really serious poker players, presumably the, the psychological tension is uh, is pretty tough. Oh, there's a fair bit of psychology in it. Uh, people react to sort of different situations in different ways and can sort of give themselves away with their body, body language a lot. Okay, so you think that sort of tension might even exist here in this studio? Uh, I'm sure some body expert body language experts out there could, uh, you know, pick a few things in me. So, oh, well, we'll be, keeping a, we'll be keeping a very close eye on what you're up to tonight. Welcome back. And tonight's challenger is a retired teacher and quiz show aficionado, Angie Pierce. Hello, Angie. Hello, Richard. Now, you've been on quite a few shows in the past. What what have you been on? Einstein Factors, Eight of the Century Twice, Pass the Buck, Weakest Link, Mastermind, Jeopardy, and, and a couple of others that have... <laughs> Died the death. Oh, look, that is, that is a heck of a list of, uh, of involvement in, in shows. Did you find you needed sort of different talents or different approaches to each of them? It's mostly um, general knowledge um, and um, just getting to the buzzer first. <laughs> OK, well, you're going to have to get to the buzzer right at the end of this show, yes, but yes. letters and numbers tonight, so maybe a new challenge for you. Great to have yes. you with us. Please welcome both of our contestants, Paul Merry and Angie Pierce. Time for some superlative work with the letters. First of all, Paul. Could I please start with a consonant? Sure. Let's start with R. And another consonant, please. S. And a vowel. A. A consonant, please. T. And another consonant. M. A vowel, please. I. Another consonant. R. Uh, another vowel, please. A. And I'll finish with a consonant, thanks. And last letter, L. And here's our clock. Letters, Paul. I got a six this time, Richard. Six for you, Angie. A seven. Seven. Hold that for a moment. Let's start with the six. Trials. And your seven? A uh, Marshall. Marshall. Could you spell that for us? M A R T I A L. David, what do you think? It's a great start. Uh, relating to the god of war, Mars, and therefore belligerent or militant. Excellent start, Angie, for seven. Uh, I found Alarmist, uh, which is uh, almost a bit like fairy tales. I'm thinking of Henny Penny. The sky is falling, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. It's too soon. It's too soon. Good find, David. Seven points to start off for Angie. More letters and uh, your first choice, Angie. May I have a vowel, please? You may. Thank you. E. Thank you. 
and a consonant. M and another one, please, Lily. M and another one, please. S and another vowel, thank you. U and another vowel. Another E and another consonant, please. C and another consonant. L uh, and another consonant, please. And to finish, T. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds on the clock. did you get from that mix, Angie? A uh, seven. Seven for you, that's good. Paul? I've got a six. Six, let's begin there. Muscle. And your seven? Clement. That's a nice one, David. It's a lovely word. Well played, Angie. Clement meaning merciful. Um, also the name of uh, several popes as well, for the same reason. What did you manage to mine from this mix, David? Well, we had osculate a few weeks ago, an obscure word for kiss, and an obscure word for edible is esculent. E-S-C-U-L-E-N-T. That is a beautiful word. <laughs> Esculent. Mm. Good stuff. Thank you, David. But seven points for Angie. First numbers game of the night. Next, there are up to ten points available, depending on just how close our contestants can get to our random target. Now, Paul, you took the, uh, the big step of kicking off with a Rat Pack last night. Um... Mm, what do you think? You might start the same way. I did slightly better with a family mix, so I'm going to stick with that. Thanks, Lily. Oh, Paul, worrying. Nah. <laughs> Too large and four small. Family mix is perfectly okay. Our number is seven, six, eight, one, and the two large, 175. The target to reach is 717. Let's chase it. First numbers, how did you go? I was two off the target at 715. Two away, that's pretty good going. What about you, Angie? I made a mistake, I made a small error. Oh, bad luck with those first ones. Never mind, Paul, uh, what was your method? Seven times 100 is 700. Seven times 100 is 700. Add the eight. Add the eight. Add the six. Add the six. And then add the one. Is seven, 715. 15. 715, well done, Paul. Only two away. Can you get us there, Lily? Um, I can. This is one of the examples where the brain automatically goes, because 717 is close to 700, um, the immediate instinct is to go to 700 and then work your way up. Um, but in fact, you get the answer by working your way down. So... Mm -hmm. OK, show us. Um, 100 minus 1 by 8 is 792. And then subtract the 75 is 717. Ah, oh, that's great. Great method. Well done, Lily. But Paul scored well too. Seven points. So that means he's on the scoreboard with seven, Angie with 14. As we head for our first break tonight and your first word mix. It's rail rink. And the clue, cheeky relative. Back after the break.